Hey Caddy. What? You know how you said you'd cover Spyro for one million subscribers? Yes, I did. Well, I can't wait that long. What? That's going to take ages and I'm not waiting that long. I want you to stop everything you're doing and make this video for me now. But I'm not ready for it. I'm not blowing all of my creative load on this video like right now. I mean, Jesus Christ. And the thing is, it's such a special video, such a requested video. What else am I going to do for one million subscribers? Yes, I'm definitely saving it for that milestone. I don't know what else I can do. It's a massive video undertaking. I mean, everyone wants it, so I might as well save it for a million, mightn't I? I don't care. I want Spyro, so get on your computer and make it happen. Okay, fine. You know what? You want your Spyro? I'm going to give you a fucking Spyro. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadakura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed for deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. And I suppose I should get ready, again, for celebrating 500,000 subscribers. Because the other day, YouTube, after the great YouTube purge of 2016, removed 18,000 subscribers from me overnight. And not just from bots or dead channels, I've had people who have been subbed for years tell me that they've been removed from my feeds and uploads. So everybody, please spread the word and make sure that you are still subscribed to your favourite channels because it would suck if you missed any uploads from your favourite creators. Especially considering that on my channel we are now back below the halfway point of making the 1 million subscriber special Spyro episode. Hashtag YouTube doesn't want Caddy Spyro video. Speaking of, yes, I know that I said I'd cover Spyro at 1 million subscribers, and I still will, but to get over this bad news of being below the halfway point again, how about we jump in a little early and talk about one of the biggest mixed bags of the PS2 era, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. In 2002, people were dying for a new Spyro game to enter the sixth generation of consoles. Pepperoni and green peppers must Insomniac, the creators of the original trilogy, went on to work on Ratchet and Clank, stating they had no more ideas for Spyro. Good on them, if you ask me. Big Quest already had a game out in 2001. We want Spyro. Yeah. And unfortunately, Universal Interactive, who published Crash 4, didn't think about any of the mixed reception that game got, and so decided to, at the same time Crash 4 was being made, employ two brand new developers who had never made a game before to work on a new Spyro game for the PS2. The game was announced as Enter the Dragonfly during this time, and apparently went through one of the most unfair and rushed development cycles ever put onto a first-time console development team, with entire levels and gameplay mechanics being flushed away last minute to meet a Christmas 2002 deadline. And that's apparent even in the first 10 minutes since Bianca and Moneybags appear once at the start and never show up again. Apart from Bianca, who vanishes for the whole fucking thing and comes back just before the game ends. But hey, I like to be fair, and I'm going to be fair with this game right now. So, how about we stop stalling and enter... Enter the Dragonfly. Well, let's talk about the things that are really bad firstly, just to get them out of the way. The intro cutscene looks atrocious, it isn't voiced very well, doesn't make any sense from a plot standpoint as Ripto is the main bad guy. I threw you in lava in Spyro 2! How the hell?! And instead of anybody looking surprised, or Spyro immediately attacking him, or Ripto immediately attacking Spyro, they're content to just stand around and talk for a few minutes. Back to what I was saying. Well, what do I want this time? I'm glad that you asked, Purple Pest, and I will be happy to do something! And as you can see straight away, the game also performs like ass. This isn't an exaggeration, it desperately tries to perform at 60 FPS. It desperately tries to work, but it just can't do it. It's heartbreaking. It's like watching an old man come home with his shopping at 0.2 miles an hour, gets home to his front door, grabs his keys, and then his hand decides to fall off, and he says, <laughs> It's like, bless it, I can see that you're trying. Keep on going, you can do it. Also, this is one of the most carbon copy games I've ever played, but somehow everything is worse. The mechanics and controls are the same from Spyro 3, but they're so much stiffer here. There's gem collecting and finding creatures to advance into other levels, but it's so much slower, floatier, and catching the dragonflies with your Bubble breath is nothing but a waste of time and a pain in the ass, especially when that's all the breath is good for. There's even a hub world with many different levels. Well, 
one hub world with nine different levels. Where the hell's the game here? And good god, the things you have to do in the levels. Everything from slow and awkward mini games to pointlessly easy but locked out until you have the right breath side quests. The redundant and characterless tasks such as melt the dragons in the easiest locations ever to continue. And utter emptiness and vastness of the level design makes everything so much more soulless. Bigger doesn't always mean better here, even if there is a lot more detail here than the previous games. Oh well, gosh, there are some good things about Spyro 4 and today I'm going to share them all with you. <laughs> okay, so let's start with this. The intro and mouth animations are horrifying, but the graphics overall are very nice. The cartoony yet rich and detailed art style translates well into the PS2, and the soundtrack, my god, it's great. Not as memorable as the original trilogy, but still a great standard set by Stuart Copeland. I also like, for as vast as they can be, the level designs themselves, the way that they're built. Apart from the hub world, that's honestly the most open and boring place in the whole game with nothing in it, and even the side quests are just time trial item hunts. But no, the level designs overall are very... <laughs> Well, okay, I guess the hub world is a lot more interesting than I thought. Anyway, yes, when the game isn't distracting itself with the boring side missions and everything, the levels are built very much like the previous games and take full advantage of Spyro's dragon abilities from gliding, charging, flaming, and swimming. And speaking of swimming, I also love how... Um... I also like the way the levels incorporate the abilities in unique ways around the varied themes of the levels such as sky dojos with lots of gliding and so on, especially with the different breath powers which are very situational, yes, but still very cool to experiment with. And when you... Um... Oh... We're, we're at... We're at, we're at the final boss. We, we, we have seven... We have seven dragonflies and we're at the end of the game. And with that, Ripto doesn't really die and more just shouts at you with his banana mouth and proclaims... The man of dragons can't last forever, can it? Bitch, can you even see this magical dragon shit? And then, that's it. You beat Ripto, look at the most awful thing I've ever seen in my life, and then the end happens. Well, that was certainly a mixed bag if I ever did see one, so there you go. In conclusion, I suppose all I can really do is say that Spyro Enter the Dragonfly gets the slaughter because it's one of the most broken and unpolished and unfinished and not fun and copycat and messy travesties I've ever played in my life. I beat the game in literally about 10 minutes because the devs didn't even want me to play their own game and I don't blame them. So if you own this game, send it where it belongs. To the deepest, cavernous and most hellish gold that you- Or you can just, you know, shoot it in the face. And then take it out back. Bury it. Suffocate it. Smother it, asphyxiate its miserable existence, and make sure that no one ever remembers it ever again. Yes. That's how we do it in my garden. And we don't know who dig this in the hole, do they, Caddy? No, they don't. Hey everybody and thanks so much for watching this video and don't worry the outtakes will be on in just a second but first I'd like to thank the sponsors for today's video an awesome site where you can grab a brand new game every 24 hours at the most ridiculously low price you can imagine. And if you go to chrono.gg forward slash caddy, first line in the description, you'll be able to see my page where you can bookmark it and check every day for a new game and a new deal. I won't tell you exactly what's on right this second or what's coming on in the future, that's a surprise for you to find out. But rest assured, it's an awesome service and anything you do buy on the site helps support the channel directly. So thanks so much for listening and here are some outtakes for you. But it won't be focused on you when I come up to you, will it? Well, then if you come here and focus on me then. Oh, fuck's sake. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadekura Show, where I always have to do the... <laughs> so everybody, please spread the word, go on Twitter and ask YouTube what the hell happened, and... So everybody, please... So everybody, please, spread the word... <laughs> <laughs> What, right, Paul? Okay. <laughs> hey, Ryan, Paul! <laughs> Who are you meant to be? I don't know, I'm just, just where I wrote in the script. Okay, ready again? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, okay. Okay, okay. ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
So everybody, please spread the word. Go on YouTube. So everybody, please spread the word. Go on. Oh my God. <laughs> this is why I'm not an actor. So everybody, please go on you. Fucking Jesus. <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. Okay, right.